Hello everybody, it's SD Medhaven here today, and we're going to be playing the Trailblazer. There are three other variants to this, known as the Rip Rod, the Tiger Shark, and the Fast Track. So, starting off, there are two packages for this gun. You have a three-shot autoloader, and then you have a single shot. So the three-shot autoloader, your base... You know, your rounds per minute is 7.83, but running the single, you're going to get an increase of 8.57. The first match that we're going to be playing today is going to be with the three-shot autoloader. Now, before we jump into that, let's go ahead and take a look at the modules. So, starting off, your engine, your power to weight at 24.03 with a horsepower of 230. You know, that's a really high power to weight ratio with such a low horsepower engine. That's because you have absolutely no armor. But your top speed at 58, your reverse speed at 22. 22 is the highest I have ever seen in this. It is probably one of the fastest tanks in the game, just in reverse. So, you know, don't don't just try driving in the battle out in reverse though. That's a, you know, thumbs up if you want to. So, jumping over to the gun, with the three-shot autoloader, you have a 19-second base reload. We will find out what we can get that reload down to inside a match. Keep in mind, I am running a premium consumable. Now, your aiming time of 2.2. That's going to be pretty quick. However, 0.38 gun dispersion value, you are going to be filling that, especially rotating turret and accuracy on the move. Now, max elevation at 15 degrees, you're going to struggle with that just a tad bit. And max gun depression at 8 degrees... Well, there's some other light tanks out there that some of them have 8, a couple have 7, then there's a lot of them out there with 10. But the benefits to this tank and the Trailblazer is the fact that you have 32 overall concealment along with 410 meters of view range. There's only one other tier 8 in the game, light tank, that has 410 meters of view range, which is the Agel and the Hawk 30. So... The advantages this tank brings to the field, they're pretty high. Rotation speed on the tracks at 52 is actually pretty high. So, you're going to be able to spin around really fast. No one's going to get a drop on you. Clutch braking is going to play a huge role inside this tank, especially with the terrain resistance being a 0 0.8, 0 0.9, which means that you are actually above your 24 power to horse ratio. 1.8, I'm going to cut it in half, but you're not even going to notice that big of a difference. Because, you know, unless you're clutch breaking everywhere you go, you won't feel it. Now, the turret at a rotational speed of 44 degrees, we were inside of a match and it did not feel like 44 degrees at all. Now, jumping over to the radio, which is your best friend inside of a light tank at 745, along with the view range of 410, you're going to be able to spot people out way ahead of you. Not just that, anyone around you, you're going to get all the juicy assist damage. Your standard rounds have a base penetration of 182 millimeters. They also have a shell velocity of 1080. Your premium rounds, which are heat, which means they will not go through cover. Whenever they hit a target, they will stop immediately, including spaced armor. They have a standard shell velocity of 1204. Your high explosives have got a base penetration of 102, which is going to make them extremely useful on the light-to-light -light encounters. However, their shell velocity at 755, you're going to have to lead quite a bit if you want to try and land those shots. The armor, I don't think I need to go over the armor. There's nothing really here to talk about except for your thickness of 15 in the front, which is going to be overmatched by any gun above 75mm. Or 60 now, to go ahead and play our second match inside this tank. Our first match did not turn out too well. Now, this match is being recorded at 4 in the morning, so we are possibly going to be seeing a Tier 10. If we are top tier, I will be surprised, and hopefully we get a good match. There are a couple of things to go over with the 
the new light tanks that they came out with. Um, they added four of the same tank, all with reskins. However, just because you have four of the same tank, if you're a suicide scout running out there and it's a tank you enjoy to play, you got three more to choose. You know, they're all credit makers. They're all money makers. I don't really look at the bonuses just because there's no point in going over the 50% bonus that's almost stock on every single premium tank, except for the, let's say, the Earthshaker, the Demolisher, and the Eradicator. They have an experience bonus at 75% bonus experience. And our first match, well, the second match inside this tank is on Proparovka. This is a Scout Wonderland map. So, it's also tier 10s. And the enemy team, the Rompanza, is the only thing that we really have to worry about that's possibly going to be out scouting us. Now, I'm running with vertical stabilizers, coated optics, and improved ventilation along with a premium consumable chocolate. Not just that, I have a highly trained crew with about 15 perks on it. So, this is going to be a, hopefully, really nice match. And as we spam A, we can see that we have a reload of 17.9. With the three-shot autoloader. Now, even though the rotational speed says 44, it doesn't feel like 44. That feels like it's rotating pretty slow. It might be 44. I'm just a little bit off. I I've been playing a lot inside of my LT432. And that thing tends to usually spin on a dime. As we whiff all three of those rounds. <laughs> all right. Could have been better, but nope, we whiffed them. Two second interclip reload does feel pretty nice, especially on this 90. Right there, you can see that 22 reverse speed kicking in. We're hitting 24 going downhill. Now, there's a couple of positions in Proparovka that if you can get to, usually do really well. And one of my favorite ones is going to be up top. Usually, it's, it's really hard to get up here because you're going to get aggressed by the other light tanks, tank destroyers, just everything. They're, they're not going to want you up here. Whenever you are up here... You line up about here, come further down. It's extremely difficult to spot you now. You have multiple bushes out in front of you. That LTB is not going to see me. And now, quite literally, I can walk off for a minute. Because I'm not worried about getting spotted for a little while. Unless I get rushed by the light tanks. Or if they decide to try and push up the side here. But I should be able to spot them. Right after they leave that bush line there, that's over 280 meters away. Now, looking at the map, I would take my shots. But since the Super Conk is so close with inside my boundary, he probably will spot me out, so I want to hold my shells. And there goes Toto. He's off in the distance, taking out all the other light tanks. Now we might risk a shot. We got muffled shot. We're not going to overmatch his side armor, so if we aim up a tad bit.
possibly hit the lower plate, but we miss. Would have been better off shooting at the grill over here. So far, this tank doesn't feel too bad. The view range advantage that it has, the top speed at 58, feels a little bit slower compared to most. Compared to the T92 or the Agel, uh, the T92 has a top speed of 60 and the Agel has a top speed of 70. So you, you do feel that difference. Plus, those two tanks have 10 degrees of gun depression. Now, with vertical stabilizers and a decently trained crew, we landed two of our shots and possibly a third. Nope, we hit a bump as we were coming up. I'm gonna start loading those high explosives to finish them off because we only have so many premium rounds with three shots. We're gonna take our first into them and see if we can land it at 755 meters per second. And we would have been better off loading the standard rounds. And we spot out the Jagdpanzer at the last second and then we get hit by him. Could have been worse. So the next match, we're going to be taking out the single shot. So far, my impression of this tank, it, it, it's not bad. It feels pretty nice. No comment. It, it feels nice. You know, there's, there's a lot of benefits to it with its concealment being over 0.32 base. So, with a fully maxed out crew, you should be able to get that around to probably 41. You know, you're, you're almost looking at levels equivalent to the Vanguard, but the Vanguard has a .39 base concealment. And the size of this tank, you know, it, it's, it's a decent size. The Vanguard's still smaller. Concealment-wise and view range, it's solid. So right here, we have the Yagel off to the side. Taking a look at the power to weight, it has a 28.57, which is actually higher. It also has 800 horsepower, but it is a lot bigger and bulkier. Top reverse speed at 24. Suddenly I feel blind as a bat because I said the other tank was extremely high and I don't think there's any other tank. I lied. Look at the Agel. It's got 24. Not just that, the Agel also has the advantage on the gun depression at 10 degrees. The radio is exactly the same. They both shoot the same ammunition type, except for the premium rounds inside the Agel are a little bit slower. Rotation speed at 42 with a 410 base view range, but the advantage that the Trailblazer has on the Agel is the concealment. The Agel only has a 0.27. That additional 0.5, it, it's a huge difference. You know, that's the difference between 50 meters to 10 meters. Now, jumping over to the uh, T92 Falcon, you know, you have 10 degrees of gun depression unless you try aiming off to the side over here and you hit your track. It's just going to overmat. It's, it's going to pop up. Your gun's going to kind of gently hit the top and you're going to only have 8 degrees of gun depression off your sides. But the second you pass that and you aim further down your side, you're going to go back to your 10 degrees of gun depression. Heading back over to the Trailblazer. You know, the hit points at 1100. That's going to be, inside of a, a tier 10 match, that's going to be three hits. Instead of a tier 8, you're looking at about five hits. And if they're loading high explosives, maybe even two if you're playing inside of a tier 8. And the LT-432, jumping over to this, you have a 0.33. So you only have a 0.1 advantage over the Trailblazer. But, difference being, this tank is extremely low to the ground. You also have some armor to stack on top of it as well. And the advantage that the Trailblazer has in this is an additional 30 meters of view range. So, now we're going to be taking the Trailblazer out, and we're going to be putting on the single shot package. And then seeing how the single shot package works out. The, the autoloader at 17 seconds, that's... It, it, 
it didn't feel too long. Like you, you can get away running with that auto loader. Looking at the board with 28 tier 8s on, uh, the tier 10s already got put into a match. 13 tier 6s, 13 tier 7s, we, sh we should be a top tier. But knowing how the matchmaking goes, it's going to throw the 7s in with the 5s because there's no 4s. And we're going to be seeing 10s. Wow. This queue feels like it's taking forever. It's only been 40 seconds though. Okay, you know, there's been multiple matches across the board that they could have put us in, but we're still sitting here. One minute and ten seconds. Twenty. There's a match right now for top tier. There's even a tier nine. And this is the disadvantage to having a platoon. Platoon matchmaking, they try forcing platoons to verse one another. So if there's a tier 9 group of 3, or if there's a tier 10 group of 3, it's going to match us up with them. Platoon matchmaking, I believe, is just not useful at all. Making it to where we're sitting in queue times for more than 2 minutes, and then they tell everybody that we're worried about queue times for 1 up, 1 down. Well, if you did 1 up, 1 down and took away the platoon matchmaking, we would have no issues. We'd be finding matches in 30 seconds, 20 seconds, even under a minute. But instead, having a platoon trying to find a match, sure, there's moments that you're going to instantly get into a game, but if there's no other platoons out there, you will stay inside of a queue for over five minutes. And I've had that happen to me a few times. So this match, we are top tier. This is going to be pretty nice, knowing that last match, we were bottom tier. And on a good map. So, I like to get a little bit of a variety on my ammunition. I don't like loading a lot of premium, but at that 250 penetration compared to the base 182, if I end up against 10s, I'm going to need that 250 depending on what I'm shooting at. The high explosives, taking five of them, you know, if you do the math against a lightly armored target, five shells with a 6.3 second reload is fast enough and enough damage to completely destroy a grill 15 or to go give artillery an absolutely bad day Red knot. And there's the 8 degrees of gun depression. You feel that playing against you right away. And a turtle. We do not want to run into him. The Stone Cold, I've already gave my opinion on that. I think that the standard shell penetration at 208 is is decent to deal with, but the premium shells penetration at 280 is just extremely high, especially whenever you're reversing tier 6s and tier 8s. Still a good solid tank, though.
Now we're going to go ahead and load up some of the high explosives inside this. With their 102 millimeters of penetration, they are made to absolutely punish tier 6. If they penetrate. And there's the Bone Shaker. And a little bit of a snapshot straight into his lower plate. And leaving the shots as much as we can to get a pop. Worked out. With our 641 hit points left, we're going to try and play a little bit of a, an aggressive play against this Bone Shaker. Honestly, the DPM coming out of the single shot, I like a lot more than the autoloader. So yeah, aiming off of the front, you do not get your full 8 degrees of gun depression. So far, this match is playing out extremely well. down to our last 300 hit points. Where was he? Right here? Oh, further back. And that heavy tank, which is... Oh, the Dreadnought's still up. No, he's not. <laughs> Good job, Toto. This feels like a little bit of a steamroll, this match. We only lost four. Then again, their Bone Shaker was just... I don't know what he was doing pulling up right there. Just able to shoot him straight into the... flattest part of his lower plate. He honestly would have been better off going to the... Uh, far left. But rather than coming up here to... B6, he would have been better off heading down to about H8... Because at least over there you have cover, plus you're not trying to drive over a hill and expose your lower plate. And we have the rear end of the Diamondback. We're going to hold our shot and make sure it pins. And that was actually a pretty good game, compared to the first one. Don't think it's a mastery, it's a second class, which, not too bad. And Toto sitting there stealing all of my spot assist. Still a good match, though. And our team combined took out nine people. Two light tanks running around, killing nine. Nine of the tanks. The Trailblazer. I like it. I like it a lot. Got it for free. Able to play around with it. You know, if you have the season pass and you are going after this tank, it is at 75. I got it earlier today and I didn't even realize I got it. But you know what? Honestly, for one of the giveaways, it's fun. It has a really nice top speed. The gun, it, it reminds me of the Gel. The only downfall is aiming off the front, you probably get maybe three degrees of gun depression. 
So, you know, aiming off your side. Yeah, no problem. Most of the time, whenever you're in a light tank fight anyways, you're trying to aim off your side. You know, coming up to a hill, just come up at a slight angle and get your gun depression. But you know what? Yeah. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am, because I'm probably going to go ahead and put another 20 matches in this tank, because it just feels good. The way it maneuvers. You know, at first I was like, the, the turret traverse doesn't feel too good, but you know what? It gets around. I like light tanks. I enjoy playing them. Yeah. As a reward, this was a really good choice. Especially that Roger Dodger. That Roger Dodger at 100. If you're waiting to get it, you're, you're going to be excited whenever you get it. Alrighty. Well, thank you for watching. Have a good day, night, or evening. Whatever time it is for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. That is the first time I've said that on any of my videos because now that I have a new computer, yeah, you know, if you want to like, subscribe, and comment, that'd be appreciated. Thank you for your time. This is Madhaven getting off.